Lipid molecules are the major constituents of cell membranes, but the question is why? What makes lipids perfect for cell membranes? Well, remember that lipid molecules are amphipathic, and what that means is they contain a polar region and a nonpolar region. And it turns out that it's the amphipathic nature of lipids that gives them the propensity, the ability to actually form these cell membranes. So when we take a lipid molecule and we place it into an aqueous environment where water is the solvent, the polar water molecules will tend to form favorable interactions, hydrogen bonds, with the polar region of that lipid. But the nonpolar hydrophobic section of that lipid will not want to interact with the water molecules. And so what happens when we place many of these lipids into an aqueous environment to basically stabilize that system, to create a system, a structure that is lower in energy, they will spontaneously rearrange themselves and form these structures. And we have two types of structures that they can form. We can form micelles or we can form the bimolecular sheet, the lipid bilayer, which basically is the cell membrane that is found around the eukaryotic cells of our body. Now, the type of structure that is formed depends on the type of lipid molecule that we have in the aqueous environment, and we'll see why in just a moment. So, when certain lipids are placed into water, they will spontaneously rearrange themselves to form structures called micelles. So let's suppose we have a single fatty acid and we take that fatty acid and place it into solution. Now, let's suppose this fatty acid is ionized. So what does that mean? So we have an ionizable fatty acid, which means we have this hydrocarbon backbone shown in red that is nonpolar, so it's hydrophobic, and we have this polar section, which is basically the carboxylic acid. And the ionized version of this fatty acid means this carboxylic acid is deprotonated, so it contains a full charge. Now, because this contains a charge, it can interact via hydrogen bonds with these nearby water molecules, and these bonds are shown in purple. Now, these interactions between the polar water and this polar head of the ionized fatty acid, those interactions are good. They are energetically stabilized. They are energetically favorable. But all these other water molecules that surround this hydrophobic red chain basically cannot form in the cannot interact in the same energetically favorable way because this is nonpolar and the water molecules are polar and so ultimately all these water molecules remain trapped and cannot interact any favorable bonds and that is not a stabilizing system and so what happens is, when we have many of these ionized fatty acids in an aqueous environment, they will form these micelles, these globular spherical structures in which the outside of the sphere, we basically have all these heads because they're polar align themselves in a way that they point towards the aqueous environment. And all these rat tails basically aggregate at the interior of that spherical structure. And what that does is it releases all these water molecules that are initially trapped around that red hydrophobic tail. It releases them and now they can interact in a stabilizing way with other water molecules or with these polar blue heads. And that is an energetically stabilizing interaction. So what this essentially does, the reason this takes place, uh, this takes place spontaneously is because it creates a more stable, lower in energy system in which we now have the interactions between these water molecules and these polar heads. Those are the hydrogen bonds. We also have electric interaction between these adjacent polar heads. These are shown in purple. And we also have these green interactions. And these are the interactions, the London dispersion forces, the van der Waal bonds between the adjacent red tails as shown in this diagram. And this is 
a stabilized system. So lipids such as ionized fatty acids will spontaneously form micelles in water. This occurs because it minimizes the polar nonpolar interactions that we have here. It releases the water molecules and that stabilizes the interactions that now can exist between the water molecules and other water molecules and these uh, and these heads. Uh, so it allows the polar heads to interact with water as well as with each other and it also basically hides these hydrophobic regions on the interior and allows them to interact with each other and this is what we call the hydrophobic effect. So in the same way that it's the hydrophobic effect that allows the protein structure to basically form into its three-dimensional shape and it's the hydrophobic effect that allows the nucleic acids to basically aggregate and form the double helix of DNA. It's the hydrophobic effect that is the driving force of the formation of the micelle structure as well as of the bimolecular sheet, the lipid bilayer. So let's move on to the lipid bilayer. So in this particular case, these lipids actually contain a very thin fatty acid, por uh, a very thin hydrocarbon portion. So in any one fatty acid, we only have one of these tails. And so this is not a bulky molecule. And because it's not bulky, these tails can easily and snugly fit on the interior space of that myocell, but bulkier lipids, so which are larger and contain thicker hydrophobic tails, will spontaneously rearrange themselves in an aqueous environment and form not a micelle but a lipid bilayer. And if we take a cross section of that lipid bilayer, this is basically what it looks like. So the major difference between this structure and this structure is that this structure actually consists of two different layers. So two phospholipid layers one and two. And each one of these sides, each one of these layers is known as a leaflet. So in this double layer, we have the polar heads orient themselves towards the aqueous environment while the nonpolar tails aggregate on the inside to form a barrier, the hydrophobic barrier. So the interior of the cell membrane, the lipid bilayer is hydrophobic because it consists predominantly of these tails while the outside and the inside portion of this bilayer consists of these heads and those are the polar regions. They can interact with each other as well as with the water molecules found on the aqueous environment. So another major difference between this bimolecular sheet and the myocell is inside the myocell because we don't have any polar region there's really no aqueous environment on the inside but in this particular case this entire lipid bilayer extends to form this globular these cir this circular structure and notice we have an aqueous environment on the inside and the outside of that structure because we have these two leaflets and they both contain these polar regions that can interact with the water molecules on either side of that membrane. So we have an aqueous environment on either side of this structure, but an aqueous environment only exists on the outside of this structure. <coughs> so what types of lipids actually form the lipid bilayer? Well, the bulkier lipids, the larger lipids. So unlike fatty acids, things like glycolipids or phospholipids or cholesterol molecules, these are too large to fit snugly on the interior structure of the myosin, so instead they form these lipid bilayers. So phospholipids and glycolipids readily form bilayer structures and not micelles. This is because the larger nonpolar tails of these lipids is too large to fit into the limited space of the micelle. So what exactly allows these two structures to form spontaneously? So as we said a moment ago, it's the hydrophobic effect that is the driving force in the formation of the cell membrane, the lipid bilayer, and micelles. So the interaction of the hydrocarbon tails releases the water molecules from the nonpolar regions and this is energetically stabilizing, energetically favorable. <coughs> so in this particular case, 
the water molecules were trapped around that hydrophobic region. But because we form these structures and these structures, that leads to a maximum interaction between the water molecules and these polar heads. At the same time, it locks in these, or it hides these hydrophobic regions on the interior portion of the micelle and the interior portion of the cell membrane, the bilayer membrane. And so we have these stabilizing lung dispersion forces that exist on the interior and then we have the polar interactions we have hydrogen bonds between the water uh, molecules in the aqueous environment and these polar heads and also the electrostatic interactions between these nearby polar molecules which are lined right next to one another so we see that therefore the tails spontaneously aggregate in the interior of the membrane because this is what creates a stabilizing system. So it allows those trapped water molecules to be released and now these water molecules can form stabilizing hydrogen bonds with these polar heads. In addition, we have the lung dispersion forces that exist between the adjacent tails on the interior portion of the structure. We have the electric and, hyd and hydrogen bonds that exist between these adjacent heads and we also have these hydrogen bonds between water molecules and these heads. So it's the hydrophobic effect that plays the role that drives the formation of the cell membrane and these micelles. So there are three things that we have to remember about cell membranes because of this discussion. Number one is the cell membrane forms spontaneously and once it forms, it closes, it forms a closed compartment. So this entire cell membrane will basically form a closed compartment in which we'll have an aqueous environment inside that is separate of the aqueous environment that is found on the outside. Number two, the major difference or one important difference between micelles and the lipid bilayer is these structures can only form very small structures, but these can become very, very large. In fact, our diameter of micelles is usually uh, 20 nanometers, but the diameter of these can be up to 1 million nanometers, and that is a big, big difference. So these lipid bilayers can be very, very extensive, and that's exactly why our cells are made up of these, or our cells contain these lipid bilayers, because cells can be very, very large in size, and this would not be able to form that same cell membrane structure. And three, these bilayer membranes have the propensity to fix themselves. Why? Well, let's suppose some type of hole is formed in that bimolecular sheath, in the lipid bilayer. Once that hole is formed, we go back to this picture where the water molecules become trapped around that hydrophobic tail, and that is not a favorable system. And so what will happen is that hole that is formed will be spontaneously fixed to basically decrease the energy of that system. And that's exactly what we mean by the bilayer membrane has the spontaneous ability, the propensity to actually fix itself if there is ever some type of hole that is formed inside that cell membrane.